All right, in this video, I'm simply showing off the easiest free method I know to transcribe audio. It does .txt files if you just want the audio, and it even does VTT files, so that's when it has those timestamps there, so you know when the words are being said. We'll get into it. Let me show it off. There are some cons to this method and, you know, variables, but I'll talk about it when we get there. First, you're just going to go over, and I'll have all these in the description. You're going to go to collab.research. This is Google. This allows you to just run some code on their GPUs and don't be worried. It's simply copy and paste. Yes, there's a little code, but I promise this is so easy. All right. So I would do is open a new notebook. What you're going to see is this beautiful. And then first step, you're going to copy the first part in the description, starting with the exclamation point ending on the G. You're going to just type this in. Don't worry about what it means. Just type it in and hit play. What it's going to do is download all the necessary stuff so that we can run transcriptions. Simple as that. So it usually takes me about a minute-ish. So I'll let that run and I'll be back. Alrighty, now that you have all this installed, and actually you can do this while it's installing. Usually I do, especially if it's a big files. You'll come over to this little file icon. You'll see this. And now you simply drag the audio file into this area. And you can drag in multiple, by the way. It's always going to give you this warning. That means that this is temporary. So if you shut it down, it loses it. You still have the file on your computer, but like this is only in its instance. So you kind of have to do this live. It's one of the cons to this system, but usually I'm only doing, you know, relatively small transcriptions and the bigger ones, you can use different models. So don't worry about it. All right. So we hit okay. So what it's going to do is upload that file audio here. Perfect. So now that this is uploaded into this, you now are able to pull from it. So now what we're going to do is go to the second thing in the description piece of code. And what you're going to do is type it or up here, you're going to hit plus new code. All right. So now paste that in. So now you should see exclamation whisper. This red part right here is what we're going to switch out to this file name. Then you're going to see model and small. So I'm going to put on the screen. There's multiple different models you can call to. The benefits and cons to these are simple. The smaller the model, the faster it goes, but sometimes it'll miss things in the transcription. So the large one in large V2 is going to be the most accurate, but it takes the longest to do the transcription. So if you have an hour transcription, it might take you 30 minutes to do it on the large, and it might only take five minutes on the tiny or base or something like that. So if you are transcribing like a meeting and you don't need every word to be perfect, like just do tiny. Like I use it for most of the things. But if I'm doing like a YouTube video transcript and it's really important to know when things are being said for timestamps, I'll do the large because it's not usually that big of a video. And I'm really concerned about how accurate that transcription is because then I'll put it into all the different stuff I use for my YouTube channel. So that actually matters more. So I'll use large. So you can choose between these all again, I'll have this in the description so you can see them and you just paste, you would just write base or medium, replace this, make sure you have that space there and nothing at the end. And then this part right here, you want to keep the quotes, but you're going to replace what's in the middle. So this is a dot MP3. It's okay. We're using a dot MP4 a totally fine. So what you would do is I actually just hit rename file, highlight it all. Then I come over here, paste it in. So make sure that those quotes are there. You didn't accidentally delete one. I've done that a few times. And then all you have to do is hit play. So what it's going to do is load it up and then transcribe it. And that is literally all it is. And then we'll let that wait as it goes through. And then what it's going to do is put all the files over here. And that's what that temporary thing is. So if you were to like shut down your computer and come back to this, they'll be gone. But you can actually walk away, let it transcribe or do something else on your computer. And then those files will be here when they're done. And then we'll download them. So... I'm going to let this load, maybe show you guys real quick as it transcribes. All right, while this is going, just real quick, I forgot to mention. So yeah, you can do multiple. So I could have dragged a bunch of audio files. And what I would do is just hit plus code, type this again in, do the same process for the next one, hit play. And so what it does is it'll actually like put them into like, like a waiting list. So it'll execute this one, save them, then it will start the next one. So if I know I have a ton of transcribing to do and I got some time, like or I'll go eat lunch or something, I'll load up like five or six of these things, let them all run and I'll go eat, come back and then just download them all. So it's a fun way to do that. If you have the time, just kind of depends. 
So boom, transcribed it. You can see the transcription here. Then you'll wait a second and boom, it pops up over here. So these are the different file formats. You can do JSON, you got another, you got your audio, SRT, TSV. I don't even know when you would really use those to be honest. I always just download the .txt and the .bt. This one is going to have the timestamps. So like if I'm doing a YouTube video and I want timestamps from my YouTube channel, like this is the transcription I'll put through a GPT and say, write timestamps so it knows when things are being said. Oftentimes you just want a summary or something. I would always do the .txt then because these are all extra characters that take up your limits when you're using LLMs. Like an LLM can only process so much, so you don't want to waste all of that data like being used on you know those timestamps if you don't need them. So those are the two I usually download, save them, and that is pretty much it. All right, so that's the end of that. I literally record everything now with consent, with consent, so that I can always store this data for later. It's better to have it and never need it than to need it and not have it. All right, have a great rest of your day.